What's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase today. I'm going to show you all something very special. I got a comment. Uh, someone was asking me to describe the differences between uh, FX tracks and group tracks. And I thought, well, let's do about 15 better and describe what all of the track types in Cubase do. So if we see the list here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 track types in Cubase. And I'm going to go through them one by one in this order. So the first is audio tracks. And audio tracks are exactly what you think they are. They are audio that you record through a microphone into Cubase. So I have a couple tracks here, singing and other singing, and let's take a listen to them. My butt itches way down in the depths. Okay, so you get the idea. That's audio tracks, and uh, audio is pretty self-explanatory. Let's move on to instrument tracks. I have Haley on Sonic, which is the main like rompler type thing loaded up. And an instrument track sort of combines a MIDI track and an audio track into one track. And these are the easiest to load if you just want one thing going on. So we can listen to it. I have a piano loaded here. My butt itches way down in the depths of my And uh, Haley on Sonic SE is a multi-out instrument, but I do less multi-out stuff these days because I just load up a brand new instrument track for almost everything. That's sort of my new workflow. But uh, that's a good thing to keep in mind. So you can load up an instrument track for each sound that you want. And that makes it easier on me because I don't have weird audio outputs and MIDI tracks floating around. It's just... It makes more sense to me, but you can do it the old-fashioned way with MIDI tracks, and that's what we'll get into now. Uh, MIDI tracks. So I have here Halion strings, and what that is is that since Halion's multi-timbral, if you look here, I have a honky-tonk piano loaded, but I also have a Kokiyu violin loaded on channel 2. So if we take a look at that patch, it's on channel 2, MIDI channel 2, you can see that there, whereas the Honky Tonk is on channel 1. So the important thing with MIDI tracks is to know what channel you're on, and you see that here in the side inspector. I'm on channel 2. So you'll hear the Kokiyu violin here. I, but... So that's a use of MIDI tracks with multi-timbral instruments. You can route multiple instruments to the same instrument by use of different MIDI channels. But MIDI tracks are also useful for controlling FX. So let's open up our audio tracks again and let's add an insert. Let's add a guitar rig. And this works for third-party effects. I think one problem that we have is that for Cubase, they want you to use the quick controls down here. And that doesn't work uh, the same way as it works with these. So, but let's look at this guitar rig that we have open. Let's add a wah pedal to this vocal signal. And that's neither here nor there, but now we have this FX track. And I'll show you, if I have this MIDI track selected and I route it into guitar rig, now this is going into guitar rig and I have a wah wah set up. So I'll select both tracks here and I'll just choose MIDI Learn. And then what I'll do is I'll, on my controller here, I'll just move this. And as you can see, I move the thing and the wah pedal moves. So let's try out messing with this singing. Pretty cool, huh? So that's another way you can use MIDI tracks is as effects controls for external effects that have MIDI learn functionality. And then a final way you can use it is for your rack instruments, the old school workflow. So I have a groove agent loaded here with a drum set loaded. And if I added a MIDI track, add track, 
MIDI and we'll call it GA for Groove Agent and we'll move it into the folder. We want GA to be routed to Groove Agent Main and the thing about the rack instruments is that they have this additional audio out that you have to unmute. Now we have Groove Agent uh, right here. And that's the MIDI track is controlling Groove Agent, but the output is going through an audio out down here. So I prefer instrument tracks because it's a little bit cleaner. So, so far we have audio tracks, instrument tracks, and MIDI tracks. So let's listen to what we got. Okay, and the next track up on the list is the sampler track. The sampler track you can find in your lower zone, you can drag a sample into it. But I've just taken a sample from the audio track. Uh, it's this sample right here. And I dragged that into the sampler track. So I'll show you where it's at. Let's open this. And here it is. I just sped up the speed a little bit and on my MIDI controller I can play that word but as if it were a keyboardable thing. Pretty cool, huh? So let's uh, hear that in the context of the track. That's pretty awesome, huh? So those four tracks are the tracks that you'll use to compose with, more or less. Everything else is sort of organizational, arrangement, or mixing oriented. But we'll continue to move on. FX, and this is what I was asked. What's the difference between an FX and a group, of, uh, a group track? And I feel like FX are more for your sends, whereas groups are more for direct routing. That's how I think about them in my head. Now an FX would be like an aux track, and a group would be like a bus. Uh, if you're into that sort of terminology. So we have this effects track, this reverb that I've set up, and we can look at it. It's just a Roomworks, just a stock Cubase reverb. So I can route my audio. I have these two. I can send my audio into the reverb bus. So I'll turn that one on, and this one's on as well. And so now... And if we want to bring down, we can bring down the send val value of the reverb. So that's how send tracks work. You send this signal, uh, as much of it as you want, into an effect, and then you can adjust the send amount and the return amount of that as opposed to group tracks where you actually directly route the signal to a bus so i have a group track set up here as well and i think i called the group vocals so here's the vocal group Say. 
And so that's how groups work. You bus individual tracks, they actually route to a group track. And then the next is VCA, which I've never used, but I found it quite fascinating. VCA is sort of what happens when you link tracks. So I have these two tracks linked to this VCA fader here, which I call vocaler and sampler VCA. So let's just link the sampler too. So now when I move this fader, if you look at these three here, they'll move along with it. Let's listen to the track itself being sent to the reverb bus. Now in a group, if I turn down the group, I'll still get the reverb because these are post fader sends. So all you get is the wet signal of the reverb, as opposed to if I turn down the VCA fader, as you can see, the FX track corresponds in kind because I'm moving all the faders. I'm not just moving a summed group of the things into a group track, if that makes any sense. So you may ask, why don't you just use a VCA fader all the time? And I would say because if you sum these, the two voices, I can put inserts on them. I can uh, put EQ and compression and limiting and whatever I want on the bus to sort of mix in stages. You know, I mix the individual tracks, I mix the groups of tracks, and that option is not available on VCA faders. But it's a good thing to remember if you want to maintain the balance and gain structure of certain things to use a VCA fader on linked tracks. So let's move on to the Arranger track. The Arranger track is something I've never used, but it's actually pretty awesome. I've just uh, drawn in these things, so if I wanted to draw it to the end of the song, I'd hit Alt and then just drag it. So I have these sections of the song. It's an, they call it an Arranger event. And if we wanted to mess with the arrangement of the song, we can do it in any order we want. So if we wanted to start with the second part, and then do the fourth part, and then maybe the third part. We can just organize any chain we want and activate the arranger chain, and it'll play it in that order. It'll play it B, D, C, A, E. So we can see here on the playhead, and I'll zoom in so you guys get a good idea of it. It'll start with B, then it'll go to D, watch. And the power of this is like you could have a chorus and a verse and a bridge. And you say, oh, well, I think we should do the chorus twice and we should do the bridge after the second chorus and you say no i think we should do the third verse then do the bridge and then end with the chorus or something like that well you can try out all of those things without having to retrack everything you can just change the arrangement within the daw and that's the power of the arranger track so the arranger track is really cool uh next we'll move on to the chord track and the chord track is a pretty dense subject the chord track you can use it to control audio, you see these chord events, and you can have the audio sort of auto-tuned to the chord track, or you can use it to control instrument tracks and MIDI. Uh, they'll respond to chord tracks as well, and they can you can play within a scale, so I could play any you know, notes within the scale on D major or A major or G major. And it's a pretty dense subject, so I'll leave that for another time, and there's plenty of tutorials online about how to use the chord track, but it is powerful and it allows you to do a lot musically without having to actually make the music right then and there. So moving on, we have the marker track. I love marker tracks because you can navigate through your projects if you add the markers with this thing here. Uh, shift one gets you to marker one, shift two, marker two, shift three, marker three, that type of thing. So if I wanted to have a marker here, I'd add it and I'll get back to it later. And so marker tracks, that's an important thing to know just for project navigation. And if you're, you're recording over and over at something, you know, it's nice to be able to 
uh, navigate very quickly. Next we'll move on to the ruler track. The ruler track can be either seconds or a time code or it can be bars and beats like you're used to, or actual samples if you're recording at 44.1 or 48. It'll tell you how many samples, or a frame rate if you're working with movies. So this is extremely powerful if you're composing the picture, or you need a piece of music that's 30 seconds long for a commercial or something, and you need to have the actual something other than the beats and bars up here. You can have multiple ruler tracks to show you where you're at. Next, we'll move on to the signature track. Now, this is in 4-4, but if I wanted to add, you just hit Alt and Enter, and I can enter a signature of 3-4, or it can be 7-8, or it can be 13-16, <laughs> or whatever you want. You can set whatever crazy time signature you feel like, and so that's a good one to know. Uh, next, we'll look at tempo track. So, let's see, we have a jump. Let's Put it to ramp so if i wanted this to ramp up uh from here to here and we'll hear it if i <laughs> but we'll take those away because only midi ramps audio doesn't ramp with tempo so you have to keep that in mind. Before you start recording audio, make sure you have your tempo set the way you want because it won't tempo ramp audio on the tempo track. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Finally, we have the transpose track. And this is pretty awesome stuff here. So I can transpose it as much as I want, but I'll show you how it works. <laughs> so you can transpose the keys and through some dark alchemy it actually also this one actually does also work in audio so keep that in mind if you ever want to transpose something of course you won't get a natural sound but you'll get something cool sounding so finally uh, we have the video track and one thing I didn't cover was folder tracks but that's what I've been using this whole time I use the hell out of folder tracks because they're super convenient for keeping your project organized uh, so finally we'll move on to the video track and if you remember I set up a marker at the video track that's five so I hit shift five boom I'm there and I'll just play this video out I recorded it right after I got done mowing the lawn that's why I'm so sweaty hi everybody I hope you enjoyed that video if you did feel free to like or subscribe and if you have a idea of something I should do in the future just leave it in the comments and I may do it so if you like what I'm doing on this channel check out some of my other videos because I've been having a lot of fun lately okay that's all everybody Bye.